probably one of the most successful pop stars of the time. However, he dies at a young age now. He could have continued to be a pop star. Many pop stars continue. They don't leave. You get intoxicated in that state. The culture that it brings you. The so-called honor and the fame that it brings you. The money that it brings you. The access and the influence that such a thing opens up for you. They're, v they're intoxicants. They're very difficult to get out of. However, religion and the love of Allah is greater than all of these things. And that is what will help a person to come away from this. He passes away praising the Prophet ﷺ, going out in his path. And subhanAllah, he's infused, he leaves his music, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a replacement that he's able to use this great voice of his. And in history, we've had this so many times when some of the scholars would hear a singer that had a very good voice because the voice is in itself a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like intellect is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like strength is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now a person can take that and use it in the right way or he can use it in the wrong way. You think crooks are not intelligent? You think they're losers? Very intelligent, but they've decided to use it in a different way, to hack people's accounts, steal credit card numbers. That's basically what they do. That same intellectual person could have done something else for the welfare of mankind. Could have designed something, could have been at Imperial College or Cambridge or somewhere and done something else. So the intelligence Allah gives to people, and then it's up to you how you use these things. Everybody has a very unique personality characteristics, and Allah gives you various different faculties. So now, there's been many times in history where somebody had mentioned that what beautiful voice he has, if only he would have used it for the Qur'an. Only if he would have infused and beautified the hearts of people with something so enduring as the Qur'an, which really beautifies the mind and inspires the heart. So Alhamdulillah, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. There's numerous other eulogies that have been provided for him that are much more in depth. I want to focus on something else. Some of his works... <coughs> For example, Dil Badal De, that one. Then there's the other one about um, going to the, the um, what do you call that, the Multazam. Very, very emotional, very emotional. Anybody who really thinks about those, it helps them a lot. It helps them a lot. It's, his voice has, mashallah, infused the, 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 the thought of these uh, great things, made, brought a lot of people closer to the deen and the religion. I met him a few times, but I didn't have too much of a personal relationship with him. I never had the opportunity to, though my two brothers, they have had, because Mona Shoaib, uh, when he was, uh, he is actually um, his f the first album of Junaid Jamshed, the first and I think the second and probably the third one as well. They're the ones who worked on it and, and launched it. So he had very close contact with him. And then my other brother who's in America right now is Al Falah Center. He's invited him over there and he had a personal communication with Junaid Jamshed as well. He tells us that he had great akhlaq, very humble person. If you spoke to him, he, he's not arrogant with all the, even after he left his music and came into halal music as such and became a Nath singer or a Nasheed singer, whatever you want to call it, right? He, people like this generally, generally speaking, on the high horse, they don't have to speak to every Tom, uh, Abu Bakr and Zaid on the street. They can, they, they can really be restricted to who they speak to, just being whizzing in and out. This is unfortunately what this thing brings about. However, he was very humble. He would speak to whoever it is, very humble. And my brother says that sometimes he'd even say a few things that were a bit, uh, a bit strict. And he, he, would, he would just listen. He would just take it. He had a lot of respect for ulama anyway to start with. But even with normal people, he was very, very respectful. This goes to show that you can be famous, but if you have akhlaq, which is most important, then that is how you win the hearts of people, and that is what people will remember afterwards. People will remember your softness, your greatness, and your personal interaction. Not how much knowledge you may have had all the time. Not how much fame you enjoyed. Not how, much other, how many other achievements you had in this world. Now, if you look at his past, to leave such a career, like Imam Ghazali leaves his position as one of the main teachers and rectors and 
uh, highest position of teaching in the Nidhamiya college of his time to just give it all up when it was one of the most coveted positions that's a big deal not everybody can do that the only way you could do that is I believe if you are feeling demoralized in your current situation so while you're a pop star while you're enjoying all of this fame and influence and everything else all the glitz that it brings you and the stardom and everything else you must be feeling disquietude an estrangement, a wahsha in Arabic you must be feeling that for you to leave it if you are very comfortable in that position why would you leave it? you only leave something when something pushes you away when it doesn't fulfill you in, such a, in, in, in some way or the other that's fulfilling basically there must have been a loneliness there must have been an emptiness. and we believe this because it's all shaitan, it's all darkness there definitely was a loneliness, an emptiness Darkness, in fact. And then he, is, he leaves that. For You have to have something that can replace that. And for him, it was religion. That gave him that replacement. Where he, man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced everything that he was doing haram with halal. What I find from here is that this should be a lesson for people who are doing things like this in the world who are engaged in things that they wouldn't like to die doing change that state and do something different what the hadith mentions that I quoted earlier which is related by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal that the Prophet وسلم, said that anybody who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good with virtue for wants to give him some credit istamalahu uses him employs him in his service, accepts him for some khidmah, makes him do something that gives him divine enablement, istamalahu or asalahu, same thing, sweetens the deal somehow for him. And they asked him, what does that mean? So the Prophet ﷺ replied, he said, he gives this person the divine enablement to do something by which people become happy and satisfied with him. Aisha radiallahu anha, she saw a person who did something very great, had some good deeds. So she said that, وَكُلِ اعْمَلُوا she, uh, she, she read the verse, of, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari, she read the verse in the Quran, وَكُلِ اعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ We can not do tazkiyah, we cannot purify anybody and say he is definitely like this or that. We say it based on dominant opinion. Because the Prophet ﷺ has said that people are the witness for people when they pass away to a certain degree. For example, a janazah went past and the Prophet ﷺ said, Wajabat, Wajabat. Right? And they said good things about him. He asked the people and they said good things. He said, Wajabat, Wajabat. Which means that paradise is necessary for him or success is salvation he is received. Right? Another person uh, they, they didn't praise him, but they said bad things about him. And he said, wajabat, wajabat. So then the whole point of that was that to some degree, to some degree, the way we're seen by people is a sign. Not for sure, not 100%, because people can then change. But generally speaking like that. We have this hadith. And Allah says in the Quran, وَكُلِ اعْمَلُوا And this is what Aisha radiallahu anh quoted. Continue to do your actions. <coughs> Continue in your deeds. وَكُلِ اعْمَلُوا do deeds, continue doing your deeds. Allah will look at them, of course. The Prophet ﷺ, because our deeds are presented to Prophet ﷺ, and the believers, wal mu'minun. So that, that, that is another way of saying that I'm not gonna, I don't have to make a judgment, but you continue. It's an encouragement to do the good deeds. So, one of the most interesting things is that he is given, who knew he was going to die at this age? He was only 50 or so. Who knew he was going to die at this age? Nobody expects to die. When you get to 60, 70, then people expect to die. But 50, you don't. And mashallah, he's moving around, going to different places, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his spouse, mashallah. And on his, on his way back, he passes away. But before that, he's given the ability to do this wonderful deed to change. Because imagine if he had not changed, then he had died. Because he was still traveling around in those days as well. That is the most, that is the greatest thing. 
that he dies at a young age, not expecting to die. And mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. So this hadith is what came to my mind when this happened. That Allah gave him the ability before his death to make this change, build up a big bank account in a sense, build up a big balance of all his good deeds. Imagine how many people he has infused you know, with the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, love of Allah, bring him back to the deen. And he was not just a performer, he would go out in tabligh, you know, free. You know, not, not just performing everywhere, but giving, bringing in people uh, to the faith and to be close to the faith. And now, it's happened with numerous people that before they die, somehow they say certain things that are very relevant to the fact that they're going to die, and maybe they don't even realize it. And thus, uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of Mufti Taqi Uthmani uh, um, uh, Damat Barakatuhum. He also mentioned this as well that in one of his final, uh, one of the, the speeches, I think it's online as well, that he gave, he actually said, Let's make a dua. And the dua is that oh, one of the first duas he made is, Oh Allah, give us death in your path. Little did he know that the next day that is exactly what's going to happen. Very relevant. You think he knew? Right? It's almost like he knew. And this kind of incident has happened with numerous people like that. And the other thing is that in the Jumu'ah before that, that he led, he read these verses. لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات. Do not for, for even an instance, never ever consider that those people who died in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are dead. But they are very much alive and they are being sustained by their Lord. And we already know that anybody who dies in an accident, who dies by drowning, who dies by being crushed, who dies in a fire, there's approximately 70 categories mentioned in the hadith about the shaheed al-akhirah. They may not be shaheed of the world, because shaheed of the world is the one who dies fighting in the path of Allah. But the one who dies in one of these freak accidents, strange accidents or whatever, they are also, even a woman who dies in pregnancy, she's shaheed as well. But here you've got somebody who dies in one of these strange accidents and he is in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So that is an addition to the fact that he's a shaheed is all in the also he's a shaheed of the akhirah, but also in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way I look at this is that this is a wake-up call for all of us. Because any of us could die. Dying in a plane crash, they say dying in planes is more seldom than dying in a car accident. Strange as it sounds. You're there suspended in the air, flying through the air, but planes are supposed to be, by statistics, through statistics, planes are supposed to be safer than, uh, than, than cars. There are way more accidents that you could die in, in a car accident or be bruised or something than in a plane. Very seldom. I know it's Pakistan here, right? But, uh, subhanAllah, right? But that, that, that is the statistic. It's a wake-up call for a lot of us, and especially people out there who are who were like him, who, start, who are still in the business or in a similar business that they wouldn't be very happy to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. Those kind of people. That they should also try to think of this and change and use this as a role model. Because he managed to benefit so many people just before he died and the Prophet sallallahu said, Allah used him. And we can only say that this is what we think. And another thing is that why him? So many other people, but why him? And as other speakers have also mentioned some of the reasons of why he came out and some of the specific points he had that were very different to other people in his field. Right? I just want to relate to you something that if you look at all of the arch enemies of the Prophet ﷺ in the early Makkah period, and I've not done any exhaustive study on this, but there's only one person that comes to mind that actually became a Muslim afterwards. And do you know who that is? Abu Sufyan. Can you think of anybody else? Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, this uh, Umayyah, and all of these, they died in Kufr. But Abu Sufyan, radiallahu an, he eventually gets Islam. And what's very interesting is that if you look at his biography, and if you read more about him, there's a very interesting story related about him. That I believe it was when Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiallahu an was being killed by the enemies. 
at that time. Abu Sufyan was there with Muawiyah radiallahu an, as a young child at that time, infant, baby, toddler. And when Khabbab radiallahu an mentioned his poem and when he, what his final words, which was like a dua, Abu Sufyan grabbed Muawiyah radiallahu an, right? And he's a non-Muslim at the time, and he just dived to the ground. It's almost like, you know when a bomb explodes, a grenade explodes, you're supposed to dive to the ground, because generally when the explosion takes place, it takes place like that, right? So if you're as close to the ground, you're, you'll be safe from the shrapnel or whatever. They used to believe that when a curse came about, a bad dua, then if you hit the ground, you would be safe. Ajib. And that's what he did. But look, later he becomes a Muslim. Hind, who chewed on the heart of Hamza, the liver and etc. of Hamza radiallahu anh, she becomes a Muslim. Subhanallah. Right? So there has to be something, some good deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why they say the question that rises, Umar radiallahu anh, when he, that day when he was an enemy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he set out to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was he in the law? What was he considered to be by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Say that he was a believer and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even on that day because Allah knew what was going to happen in the future. So there are people who Allah will give the tawfiq to. They have a, mashallah, good ending, right? Which matters the most, which is the significant factor here in the mal'amalu bil khawatim. So regardless of how they spent their life, they've got some goodness in them. That goodness will grow inshallah and one day it will happen. So this, the lesson it teaches us that whatever you may be doing today, always, always keep a window open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to focus on the bit of good even if you think it's difficult for you to do all good, but at least try to do some good. And inshallah one day Allah will bring out the fruits of this and you will reap the crops of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless him and his family to the highest, in the highest levels of Jannah. Make the rest of the uh, stages of the hereafter easy for them and those who've left behind their children, etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the ability and the tawfiq to further the work that he had started following. So, and make this an inspiration for a lot of the other people who used to hold him as a role model and even those who didn't but could follow his path and make him an inspiration.